So what happens when the source of the sound is moving? Well, the results are a little bit different than the change in sound for a moving observer. The car in the diagram is emitting sound waves. As it moves to the right, it is essentially compressing the waves together. So the wavelength behind the car is not the same as the wavelength in front of the car. Our wave is moving at speed v. The car is moving at some velocity. and We are going to call this velocity u, since it is the moving object. It is pretty safe to say that the car is traveling at a slower velocity than the wave. So in a given amount of time, the wave is traveling a further distance than the car. This difference in wavelength is what the person standing on the right actually perceives. So the first wave is emitted and travels its wavelength. In that same time, the car, which remembers the source of the sound, is traveling some distance before emitting another wave. So the sound is emitted much closer to the source for the second wave than it was when it was emitted for the first wave. Now if we want to know the difference in the wavelength, we need to only know the velocity of each wave and the period of the wave. So lambda prime is equal to vt minus ut, or the velocity of the wave minus the velocity of the source times the period of the wave. Now what we are really interested in is the frequency of this new wave as it is observed by the person, because we are interested in what the wave sounds like as the car is approaching. The person sees a different wavelength and a different frequency, but the velocity of the wave has not changed. So the first wave, the second wave, and the wave difference are all traveling at the same velocity. We can arrange this to solve for frequency prime, which is the frequency of the difference since we defined a lambda prime as the wavelength of the difference and the velocities are equal. We also determined a way to find the wavelength and the difference using the velocities. Now if we have a t in the denominator, we have one over period, which we know to be frequency. So this allows us to find the observed frequency in the wave when the source is moving towards the listener. Looking at this equation, we see that the frequency will increase if the source of the sound is moving towards you. So what if the source of the sound is moving away from you? In this case, u becomes negative in our equation. So if the source is moving away from you, the frequency decreases. To summarize this a little bit, let's look at our equation. If we have a stationary observer with a sound source moving relative to the observer, there will appear to be a change in frequency of the sound. We can determine this frequency using the original frequency along with the velocity of the wave and the velocity of the source. If the source is moving towards the observer, the velocities are subtracted and the frequency of the sound increases. If the source is moving away from the observer, the velocities are added and the frequency of the sound decreases. This change in frequency is known as the Doppler shift. Suppose a train that has a 150 hertz horn is moving at 35 meters per second in still air on a day when the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. What frequencies are observed by a stationary person as the train approaches and after it passes? So we know that the source is moving towards us and then moving away from us. We also know that the velocity of the wave as well as the velocity of the source. We determine the frequency of the approaching train to be 167 hertz, which is indeed higher than the actual frequency of the horn. For the train moving away, the only difference is we are adding the speed of the train to the speed of the wave and we find 136 hertz. One more thing to keep in mind, this only holds true if the observer and the source are along a more or less straight line. The further away from the sound source you are, the less your perception of the sound changes. Suppose a jet airplane is coming straight towards you. As the velocity of the plane increases, so does the Doppler shift and the frequency of the sound as observed by you. As the velocity of the jet increases, the value in the denominator approaches zero. In terms of waves, as the jet reaches the speed of sound, the difference between the velocities reaches zero. And so as one wave completes one wavelength, the jet produces another wave right on top of it. So as an observer, all of the sound waves being produced hit you at the same time, and essentially the frequency is infinite. Once the jet passes the speed of sound, it is basically outrunning its sound waves. An observer just in front of the jet will hear no sound until it has passed, but then hears the waves all at once. All of those waves together constructively interfere to form a massive disturbance called a sonic boom.